hey YouTube family how are ya well hey um so I'm Lisa blue grandma welcome 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 and uh, if you are new to my channel hey uh, I'm glad you guys stopped by and hopefully you will click that subscribe button before you leave so you can come back and watch other videos that I post um, and if you're not new to my channel welcome back you guys good to see you all <laughs> so as you know this little gal had a bath the other night well last night and she is still in her jammies I can't have that happen she can't just be in her jammies right anyway so I thought well I'll go ahead and put her back on camera we'll show you her little outfit that she's wearing and today is gonna be story time true life story time <laughs> so uh I'm going to give you a little bit of history about myself, okay? Um, I know that I've talked to my, about my growing up and my hip issues and stuff, but I did not show you um, these photos. They are... They're not that great, okay? But um, anyway... So this was me, and that bar, and here in this picture, I have that bar between my legs there, my sister sitting on the ground, and I think that was an uncle behind me, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, this was the beginning of my life. Um, I think I was about not quite two years old at the time um, but I actually it was my my grandpa that noticed something was wrong with my leg my mom said that when I would walk I would walk like if one leg was on the up on top of the sidewalk and the other leg was down on the on the ground so I would walk like this all the time and he told my mom he says there's something wrong with that girl's leg you need to get her taken care of and get her checked out so they took me to Reno Nevada and um, that's when they found out that I had hip dysplasia they treat hip dysplasia completely different now um, now they don't do surgery anymore they basically put the child in a a sling kind of and they keep them in that sling for months and months until that and it makes an impression of the bone into the hip joint well back then you know they they had not completed any kind of surgeries at all they didn't know how to, to take care of that issue and so um, I'm just gonna show you on the doll here so it would be so on the side of my leg okay this doll's heavy so from about here it goes all the way up my leg and about around here that's how far they cut me open when I was two years old big cut and when they did that they went in and removed the iliac wing of the hip and uh, then they put me on that cast and you'll see that is a full that's a cast okay I'm trying to get it where that lights not shining right directly on it um, so you couldn't remove that bar it, it's a cast but here in the center there was a hole okay and that's where you would actually tuck the diaper up inside and up behind <laughs> if that must have been a joy for my mother changing those diapers Whew. sorry mom I am so sorry the only two people that would actually hold me is my mother and my aunt Sharon so thank you aunt Sharon I love you so much thank you for for going to Reno with my mom on all those appointments um, that was trying on both of you guys 
very trying so thank you uh, but anyway so because I learned I, I mean I couldn't walk so I had to learn how to get around so I actually would scoot and I would take my arms and I would scoot across the floor well I got really strong in my arms I'm really strong and uh, so my sister being older than I was couldn't keep anything from me and uh, if she had something and I wanted it I'm taking it <laughs> but she'd always we so weave me alone but uh, yeah I'd reach up there and just grab it and take it I mean I was I was a strong little whippersnapper um, mom had told me now well, back then you didn't have car seats so don't go crazy on me going you weren't in a car seat no they weren't those weren't mandatory when I was a kid I mean yes you made a bed on the floor of the car if you went on a long trip and you had to share the seat with the sibling <laughs> you know nobody was strapped in I don't think there was even seat belts in half the cars but anyway um, when I was little mom had me propped up in the front seat as much as she could, you know, you really can't sit in a car seat. And um, anyway, she had to slam on the brakes, and I guess I just reached out and put my arm on the dash and just held myself. And <laughs> she said she went to reach over and grab me, but I had already just held myself up there. And anyway, through all these years, and uh, I had to go back and forth and back and forth to Reno for several, several years of my life. And the last time I went to the doctor, I was a teenager, I think. And at that time, he told me that I should never have children, that I wouldn't be able to carry them, that my hips wouldn't be able to carry them, uh, that I wouldn't be able to give natural childbirth. He also told me not to uh, do strenuous activities that's going to do, you know, like um, cheerleading or dance or, or anything, gymnastics, stuff like that. Well, you can't hold this girl down. It's, it's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. Nope. Um, I am stubborn. I am headstrong. And I'm a survivor. And I had three babies, carried them all three naturally, gave all three natural childbirth. And no, I did not have any uh, of that good stuff that you guys have now that you can't feel the pain. They didn't have, if they had that, I was not offered that. I was not offered any, ooh, let's take away the pain sort of thing. Uh-uh, nope. It's like grin and bear it, honey. <laughs> Crap that hurt anyway so my first baby he weighed eight pounds five ounces uh, boy my second baby he weighed seven pounds five and a half ounces a boy and then my third baby I had a little girl eight pounds five ounces I had big babies and here I was told that I wouldn't be able to have babies. This little outfit is just adorable. Check this out. I haven't got her socks on her yet, but anyway, it's got this little white blouse and a little skirt. <laughs> just a cute little outfit. Um. Anyway, we've got to tie the back, and we just got these little white socks. These are so cute. Little bows on them. Uh, but anyway, so. Yeah, through the years, I I did everything the doctor says don't do. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I I kept that hip around for quite some time, and it made it till I was what forty, forty, no fifty. It close to that anyway. Can't even remember how it was back in twenty twelve. <laughs> So, uh, that's when I had my surgery done. Thank God I didn't have it done sooner than that. Because, um, they actually had a recall on the striker hip, the hip joint, 
I don't know if you guys heard about that or not, but um, if you're a Grey's Anatomy fan and you watch Grey's Anatomy, it was on one of those episodes that um, actually Dr. Weber had that artificial hip and the steel, what happens is that the steel rubs against one another and you get metal poisoning. And so they actually stopped using that hip in uh, June of 2012. My surgery was done June of 2012. And they had just stopped using that hip. I still have a striker hip joint, but it is not, it's not that one. Um, but I tell you what, I still keep a close eye because you do can't count on those joints, you know, lasting and I gotta turn her this way so I can tie this. Hang on there, kiddo. Don't go, go falling. You're a big, big girl. Have to have my husband come pick her up if she fell down. <laughs> Couldn't pick this thing up. Anyway, um. Oh, this is just adorable, you guys. Oh my goodness. Where was I? What, what was I telling you guys? Um. Well, anyway, just, you know, being a survivor and, and whatever, whatever, you know, a doctor says, I'll never walk again. They'll never do this again. They'll never do that again. You know what? Only God knows. Only God knows. And God gave me. Oh, I'm so thankful for for the person that I am that he's made me to be um, I'm yes I'm a force to be reckoned with I know what's right and I stand up for what's right I will stand for what's right until death um, I'll fight for my friends my family uh, if someone hurts them in you know, I just, I can't stand for that. It just, it drives me crazy. I, I just, people just need to be good people. Just, just be good. Be righteous. Be good. Um, be kind to your neighbor. Love one another. Uh, follow Jesus Christ. You know, if everybody lived the way that Christ wanted us to live, do you realize what kind of world this would be? It would be amazing. There would be no murders. There would be no rapes. There would be no theft. No lies. No deceit. None of that. It would be such a wonderful, wonderful world without the evil in it. And, um... You guys, I know that I... I look. I want to make something very very clear because I think some people get that I am a gayophobe I'm not I'm not at all I have some friends that are gay I don't agree with their lifestyle at all I don't agree with it I don't have to accept it that's their life God gave each of us a choice. Every single one of us. Um, Adam and Eve, he gave them a choice. You know, here's all this. You can eat everything, but don't eat of that one tree. Just don't eat of that one tree. And what do they do? They go and mess it all up. You guys, and it's just been, it's been evil ever since. And if you don't think evil treads its feet all over this world, you are severely, severely mistaken. Because when people are like, well, if there was a God, there wouldn't be hurricanes. There wouldn't be all these deaths. And if there was a God, there would be cancer in children. There wouldn't be this or there wouldn't be that. Or, oh my goodness, do you guys not realize that it's not God's fault? 
God made it perfect and we screwed it up. Adam and Eve, they messed it up and we just follow suit. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's not God, people. That is Satan. Satan was in the garden. He tempted Adam and Eve. Well, first he tempted Eve. And, you know, anyway, there you, you know the story. And you guys, I mean, it, temptation is out there. It is so out there, no matter what you do. Alcoholism. Um, for somebody that has problems with alcohol, you put a bottle of alcohol in front of them, and that's temptation. That's not God. That's, that doesn't come from God. That comes from Satan going, okay, you know what? <laughs> he's trying to quit, but we're going to make a situation to where he's going to be in a place with alcohol. Now, he needs to have faith in God. He or she needs to have faith in God and trust in him that he's going to get them through this. But instead, a lot of times they don't and they fall off the wagon and they, they follow what, what you're not supposed to do. Um, a kleptomaniac. Do you think God makes a klepto? No. Does God make a liar? No. No, he made us perfect beings in the womb. He stitched us together. No, this is a doll, but we were all babies. Yes. I am a baby that learned how to talk. <laughs> what do you think of that? And thank God my mother did not kill me in the womb. Because had she done that, not only would she have wiped me out, all my children, my grandchildren, their lives, by killing that one child that's in your womb, you're killing a whole a whole beautiful life of other people that, that that were that were supposed to be born I was supposed to be born so that way I can create these little lives of my two sons and my daughter that they can go and they can create other lives and they can grow and they can create other lives that is what God said. Go. Create. You know, fill up the earth. Come on, people. If you don't want your babies, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I understand. Some people don't have the means to be raising a baby. They don't have groceries to feed a baby. They don't have a home. Maybe they're living on the street and they don't even have a home. After they go and have the baby, what are they going to do? Where are they going to take it? There's options, people. There's options. There's so many people out there that want to adopt a baby. They can't have babies. Um, some people, they actually have dolls because there's no babies up for adoption because everybody's having them aborted so all these people that want these precious little souls they want to raise them they want to love them they want to be grandparents someday they want to watch their children grow and watch them succeed graduate be married have grandchildren life goes on people don't and if you've had an abortion I you know I, I don't condemn you for that I don't. Um, one of my grandbabies was aborted. It, it's sickening. It, it, I mean, it, it's sickening to me because I had nightmares. Nightmares. My son, my son was only 16. His girlfriend was 16. And, I mean, they were both so young definitely not old enough to be having babies by any means they still were in high school um they had plans to graduate go to college uh, be in the navy they had so many dreams and she ended up pregnant which was terrifying um that's not something that you want to hear from one of your children and 
I begged them, please, please don't abort that child. Please don't abort that baby. Please, 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 please. I begged. I would have dreams. I would have dreams that this baby was crying and crying out, Grandma, help me. Grandma, help me. Grandma, help me. And I would wake up in a cold sweat just bawling. And I was helpless to do anything. That's part of my blood. That's part of me that was growing inside of this girl. And she wanted to kill it. Ah! You guys, it, it's not fair. It's not fair. So what if it's your body, your choice? You know what? It's that little body in there. It's their choice. The families should have a right to say something. The fathers. You women, you want fathers to step up and pay child support. Mm -hmm. They're going, well, I had the baby. You need to support that baby. Well, then that man has a right to say, you know what? That child that is growing inside of you right now is my sperm. That actually, it's part of me. It's part of my family. It's part of my heritage that is there and you cannot kill it. And I, I believe that that young man has a right to a voice. Yeah. You know what? You're sitting there. If you're listening to this right now, and you're hating every word that's coming out of my mouth. <sighs> At least you are sitting there on your comfy couch or in your bed or laying down, eating your potato chips, having your soda pop, whatever it is that you're doing. You know, partying on the weekend, skiing out with your friends, maybe doing some toboggan and some skiing and go traveling, go to Hawaii, smell some flowers, do whatever it is that you want to do because you want to experience life. What right do you have to take away that life? Their right to meet up with friends, to go dancing. To have a wedding. To have babies of their own. To go horseback riding. To live life. You're living yours. So if you're pregnant right now, if you're thinking about abortion, I beg of you, with every beat of my heart, I beg of you, find a different way. find a different way there's people out there people that, oh gosh they want a baby so bad and they would be such good parents wouldn't you want that for yourself if you were raised in a crappy situation wouldn't you want your baby to grow up in a beautiful home and, and loving parents and that sit around at the kitchen table and or you know in nighttime dinner and and with their brothers and sisters and you know even if they're adopted you know with their adopted brothers and sisters and talk about their day in school anyway my story time went didn't it um i i don't condemn you if you had an abortion i don't I just ask that you don't go do it again. Please don't do it again. Um, if you're going to have relations, use protection if you don't want a baby. Double up protection if you don't want to have a baby. Because it's their life. You guys, I'm I'm done being so a negative Nelly. A negative Nelly. I just I, I, I just get so passionate. I am passionate about my beliefs. 
um, you can have your own YouTube channel and you can stress your passions. And if you disagree, you can go ahead and disagree and put it on your YouTube channel and talk about it. Talk about it all you want to. You can talk about how you had it done. You know, you can talk about it all you want to on your channel. And I'm not going to hate you for that. So don't hate me for mine. Okay. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for giving me the courage to put out this video. Lord, you know that I was struggling uh, putting it out there, knowing that I could be hated. But as you said, Lord, you were hated by the world first. And that you'll be hated as well. And Lord, it's okay. I understand and it's okay if I'm hated because I I want to get your word out Lord Jesus I just pray that your word gets heard in Jesus' name in Jesus' precious holy name Amen okay I gotta get back out there because it's my turn with the two and a half year old I need to go give grandpa a break because I hear him in there going I love you guys. Till next time.